Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Chrono Trigger. Last time, an unlikely ally came to our side, and we saw all the different ways this tale can go. This time, before going after any of those goals, there's something we gotta do. The party is currently level 39, and it's based on the party leader. Magus is thankfully 37, so he does give us a few grace levels, but I'd rather not let this get any more out of hand than it presently is. Hey, that spiky-haired fellow hasn't been coming around lately. Wowza! You m you hauled in a marlin here, kids! He can use shadow magic. He could probably teach me a thing or two, but there's nothing I can't teach him. What do you want? You looking for some practice? All right! Oh, this wacky, zany, silly music that spells your doom! Never actually tried using charm in him before. Might as well. He does lots of damage to the party. I brought Ayla and Frog for the Slurp Kiss. No, okay, just missed. I figured as much. Uh, let's get the Slurp Kiss ready. Just get everyone in the party there. Magus can be our main attacker this time around. And I told you that I had a story about this joyous, silly song that I wanted to share with you next time that we heard it, and we are long overdue for that story. So here we go. This is not my story. This didn't happen to me, but I got permission from a friend of mine to tell it. I know somebody who very funnily had a fight with their ex to this song, where they loved Chrono Trigger music and they had this nice song going on in the background and they got into a really heated argument over IMs that went on for hours while the song was looping because they can listen to music for hours and hours and hours. And they said that it was just the most awkward thing that this wacky zany song happened over a serious fight that contributed to the end of their relationship. <laughs> It's just, it's such a weird thing. Like, every time they hear this, they shudder. They they were with me over my shoulder when I was playing this. And they were actually visually sick looking to this song. And I asked them what was wrong, prompting them to tell me this story. The mental image of a fight that he did with this looping in the background, it sounds like it's straight out of a romantic comedy. Anyway, I've chosen Magus to be the attacker so that he can get more of a spotlight. I've gone over how he's capable of using all four types of magic in one and has whatever elemental weakness you could ever want in the situation, making him yet another nice guy to have around. What I haven't been over is that his regular attack, though not useful in this fight, isn't that bad either. His scythes do good damage. He is an attacker for all situations, and that makes him really special. Certainly not what the world's come to expect from magicians. He is better at using Lightning 2 than Chrono, like I said. And there is no level 3 water magic. Frog nor Mara learns it, so in addition to being the king of shadow magic, he's also the king of water magic. And one could argue, he's also really good at light magic as well. The thing about him is that he's been our enemy all this time. He doesn't work well with others. If you noticed, he did not learn a single dual tech after the first fight that we had with him. That's because his only downfall is not having any dual techs with anyone. And that black gemstone that we picked up all that time ago, that, that needed techs that we didn't have in order to perform a triple tech, that is also one of Magus's techs. He needs items to enable him to use triple techs with anyone else. Just so long as anyone involved in said triple tech has the item equipped, it doesn't matter if Magus does, but it's definitely one of his downfalls to be sure. He is the enemy right to the bitter end, even when he's helping us. We've done quite a lot of damage to him already. I'm just playing this very safe, having the heals ready. I could use a uh, barrier sphere to reduce the damage. That is actually a pretty good tactic against him because he can be pretty hard, though it hasn't really been needed. I just always have the slurp kiss ready whenever he does level two magic and we just got him in an endless loop pretty much. Maybe I'll have Ayla just kiss Magus. What a dubious honor to be giving her. <laughs> Uh, considering everything that we've been through, that's got to be an awkward conversation whenever the party orders her to do that, just to get him caught up in health. Um, yeah, we'll go for a, we'll go for an Ice 2. Ice 2 is kind of a long animation, which is why I don't use it that much, but it doesn't really matter as long as I'm using magic at all. Uh, never mind, didn't have to. Oh me, oh my! That was embarrassing. <laughs> Guess you, uh... Ain't so bad after all. Here, this is for you. Healthy choice set. One magic capsule, five high ethers. What can I say? I'm the master of war. Magus is the whole reason that we won. He gets the magic capsule. With the necessary preparations out of the way, now has come time for us to choose our direction. That fool. 
No man so young should have to die. The unused blade goes to rust, you know. Chrono strong! Chrono no die! No true! Ayla find Chrono! Ayla go. Boring here. Magus, take Ayla! Chrono's absence seemed to adversely affect everyone's mood. May I be of assistance? I shall await your next instruction, then. I mean, he was always a pain, but now that he's gone... D don't get any crazy ideas now. I I just thought of him like, like a brother. Don't you need my brain power? Oh. Let's go. Let's go get Chrono. Take me with you. Oh, come on. That boy's existence is of no consequence. My attention is focused elsewhere. Are my powers required? Know that I will not hesitate to take your life should you prove a hindrance. It sort of felt right to try to resolve this first. Luca and Marl are definitely the most qualified people to come along and, well, this one's gonna take an awful lot of explaining if we ever do see him again. We'll see if the one who crafted our wings of time can set us on the right road to possibly bringing Chrono back. This, along with all the objectives that appeared as the Black Omen did, can be tackled in absolutely any order that you wish. This is just merely the way that I've chosen to do things. And I feel like right now is the first moment where you could realistically challenge Lavos and stand a decent chance. Of course it was gonna stay open-ended and not just drop off. How convenient, drops us off right where we need to go, but I'm going to ignore that because it's me. I wanna go into the domes really quick and show that there's something I wasn't aware of. Not you. I don't want to uh, know. The thing I was not wanting to show is you caring most about money. So there are still people in the Aris Dome, too. What's this? A plant, you say? What's a plant? It's strange. Looking at that thing makes me want to keep on living. I have never seen a thing like this before. I made it through the ruins with a cutting from the sapling that grew from that seed. Amazing what you can do when you think you're dead anyway. That thing edible. The plant that we encouraged them to start cultivating last time we were here has blossomed and produced some seeds. We can see that the people in the different domes actually have developed some sense of hope since we last saw them. We can see that man came from the Aris Dome in order to deliver the news to this one. Hey, you're back. Mommy said daddy's somewhere far away now. Don't worry, I won't give up. I have this child to raise and that sapling. Since you've come, everyone seems to have regained their will to survive. It appears your energy is contagious. You can reach the continent to the south through the sewers. I would advise it. that's where Death's Peak sits, the source of all this devastation. Oh, it's you! Look, the seed sprouted! It's nice to see our actions have meant something. The Black Omen has now appeared in every time period, antiquity onward. Except for 1999 AD, of course. I really do have trouble saying those words. It's the Keeper's Dome that beckons us. Death Peak harbors a power capable of restoring the slain to life. But the power to reverse death is not one easily invoked. The needs must be great, and the person's existence of utmost importance. And what's more, you'll need a double. A doll identical to that person in every detail. Then, and only then, will the power deign to hatch the egg. Without the doppel doll, there is no meaning in going to Death Peak. Go to the place you have left it, and retrieve it with all haste! Back to the present time with us! With the Black Omen looming overhead here as well, that's gonna take some getting used to. At least with the timeline altered, everybody just thinks it's normal, so we won't have any explaining to do. We'll land in, uh, we'll land in, uh, oh gosh, Truce? Truce. It's called Truce, right? Uh, yes, Truce. Oh my gosh, it was on the tip of my tongue there for a second. I wanted to say Guardian. I'm like, no, that's not it. That's the name of the castle in the forest. Uh. I wanted to go here. 
Because ever since obtaining the winged epic, Taban has something new. Oh, Luke is already in the party. What am I doing? Oh, perfect timing. Obtain Taban's suit. Another great invention just completed. The ultimate in defense for my beautiful daughter. Been waiting to get rid of that Taban's vest for so long, and now Luca can finally catch up with the rest of us. Taban's suit offers one more point of speed and 46 more points of defense. Uh, yes, please. Halves damage from fire as well. Of course I want that. A hasty mage is a good mage. Now, we have a few places that we can go. Of course I want to stop by Chrono's house, but what he is referring to is the duplicate doll of Chrono that we won all the way back in the Millennial Fair. If you have not won that yet, you will need to go back to Lean Square and earn silver points playing Nordstein Beckler's game to get it. Should you need to do it, there are some mindless ways ha, huh, to uh, raise up silver points. Come on, Marl, you know how to do it. It's easy to earn silver points doing this because it's just a game of timing. You can not really have to pay much attention, and I recommend saving before playing Nordstein Beckler's Tent just to make sure your points don't go to waste. Uh, huh. That don't look right. Man, Magus, first you dishonor his memory, and then you do that behind his back after he's dead? Something else that can now be witnessed is bringing the entire party into the prehistoric dance. Everybody dance now! Uh, 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 uh. You can see all their different sprites. Some of them unique. I bring this up because, yes, this means you can make Magus do dances. Many of them are common sprites that you would see in other situations, but one that is not so common is this. You can make him laugh. The big softy tries to hide it, but it's one of the very few situations where you can honest to goodness see Magus legitimately having a good time. I guess his adversary just had to be dead before it could happen. Chrono's house. Nobody home. But upstairs. Oh, hello. Is Chrono all right? Yeah. He's just, he's just fine. Well, I hope he's not causing you too much trouble. You tell him I said to behave himself, all right? Um, listen, I, uh, I, I mean, yes? We'd like to borrow this doll for a bit. Go right ahead, dear. Obtain the Doppel Doll. You stay out of trouble now. After leaving the house and coming back in, Chrono's mom will not heal us without Chrono. Told you the actual purpose of True Sin was gonna be sad. Yes, that'll do quite well. It seems the time has come for you to attempt Death Peak. It is the only chance you have of reviving your friend. I've implanted one final program. Truly, I mean it this time, in this construct's memory banks. It will help guide you up the mountain. Please stand back. Executing program. Executing program. Executing program. The three entities you just saw will aid you on Death Peak. This ends my message. Now I must ask you for a favor. This construct has reached the end of his final program. Please let him rest. The switch is on his stomach. Time no longer appears to flow for this construct. For someone we never truly got to meet while he was still sane, he's helped us out an awful lot over the years. Lots of serious moments, lots of traveling through time. Let's leave it all behind and get up Death Peak going on one more adventure.
Walk when the wind dies down, and hide behind trees when it picks up strength. Only when talking to it are we invincible from the winds. There, it spawns in a tree, and we finally have a way to get up this mountain. Off to the right from right here, we got a capsule on our last visit, and I'll just let you know that, grab that if you have not already, be on the lookout for it. It's not super hard, oh. <laughs> great, just great. <laughs> Not super hard, guys. <laughs> okay, gonna get behind the tree. Get behind it. Good. Can't stray too far away from it. The winds do still blow you back a little. I was saying that off to the right, there is a capsule there that you can... That you can get on the first visit. Not impossible, but tight window of time to be sure. Holding down the B button, if you have auto run like I am, I do, uh, turns on the walk function, which will make you stay in place as long as you hold up. It's a helpful feature. It's a case where walking is better than running. There, I said it. Ah. We'll keep going up the mountain, and not the song I expected to play here. This is usually reserved for kind of grassy, peaceful areas, and this place is anything but. So first off, we have new enemies. These are blood yolks. Or as they're called in the Super Nintendo version, rather unfortunately, Crackers. Thank goodness for the sensors, right? <laughs> well, we got we take them out. They're very easy enemies. They just absorb HP. Nothing all that too special about them. We fought enemies like them before. Get a magic ring. Seen one of these before already. It raises the magic stat by six. I don't have the heart to take Shala's amulet off Magus. I know I'm a speed demon, but finally, everything that Shala makes me feel is probably the first and only thing that could ever make me not outfit somebody for more speed. No, I don't want to get rid of anything. I like us just the way we are. Though I have to say it's pretty good meta humor how the antagonist has that item that every boss seems to have that makes them immune to all status ailments. It gives it an explanation in universe, and besides, I've been meaning to get me one of those for ages. These things move awfully fast for eggs. Broken eggs, no less. Execute could learn a thing or two from your guys' speed stats. Whoop! We it just devoured Marl! I knew they absorbed HP, but sheesh! And that one down there looks like it's flexing its eggy, yolky biceps at us. What silly enemies to put on such a serious location like this. Death's Peak, we have heard in the past, is the source of all of this devastation, and we also heard it earlier today, so um, I guess that counts as the past. This is what Lavos became in the later stages of its life. You might be thinking like, well, Lavos just kind of, you know, derped off somewhere after it erupted and like, where is it now? This is what Lavos ultimately became when it was mature, just this icy mountain peak. Um, this over here is a macabre. Macabre, macabre, I don't actually know how that word is said now that I say it out loud. It's not a pronunciation I thought to because I always read it and not uh, say it. They have a scythe attack, much like Magus. They can reduce you to one HP, and they have Crimson Rain. Weak to magic, not weak to physical attack. Similar to all the undead enemies that we've fought so far, probably not a good idea to hit them with Shadow Magic either. If I had to guess, but I don't know for sure. That aside, I bring up Lavos being Death's Peak, because this level of detail is ridiculous. If you were to overlay the map of 1999 AD over the map of 2300 AD, you can see Death's Peak actually is where Lavos erupted from the Earth. Utterly incredible. Seems like we're gonna have to take a very roundabout way of going through here. And you know what? Luca hasn't gotten to do anything because she's so slow and... Yeah, we'll let her do this. Gonna sap Marl's HP away. All right, you can attack for a few more precious seconds to feel good about yourself so that Luca can feel good about herself. See, everybody wins, except you because you died twice now. Oh, they didn't die! Come on! What is it with Luca always being the lame one? I like you, Luca. I really do. I think you have a great personality. My, any distaste I have for you comes strictly in how useful you are in typical battle situations. It's saying something when our healer is able to knock him out, but I guess it's kind of hard to compete with Marl after all. I, I don't know if I've said this outright, but I consider Marl to be one of the greatest healers of all time in anything I've ever seen. I've never seen a healer that's such a compelling character and uh, so good in battle and able to fulfill multiple purposes. This is an interruption to happy thoughts in multiple senses. Meet the Lavo Spawn. Uh, we're gonna do haste on Magus, I think. Uh, Magus was probably not a very good choice to bring into this fight, actually. 
Um, basically, if you attack, you want to attack, you can, nah, what am I trying to say here? You can attack the spines, or you can attack the head. You want to go for the head, because attacking the spines will resort in it counter-attacking you every time. Maybe I'll demonstrate this once, you know what, why not? I haven't been demonstrating what enemies are technically capable of. Yeah, shell counter, lava spawn needles. It's just one of those things where if you don't have battle cursor memory on, it's kind of inconvenient and annoying, but because we have it on, it's not that bad. Status ailments, all right. Uh, or it's ineffective, that's good too. As funny as this is, I think Marl's gonna be fine as an attacker, and I'm gonna make Magus the designated healer. He can only hit multiple targets unless he uses his regular attack, and that's the opposite of what I wanted. Luke is confused and she's just laughing in our faces as she shoots and makes him counter. <laughs> For I, I went from thinking that there was nothing that he was going to do that was threatening to actually being like, oh crap, to, uh, I need, I'm running out of time here. I, I need to do that. It unconfused her in the process. Well, that's what I get for being wishy-washy. Improvement number one, using a shelter on the save point. Improvement number two, killing the enemies right outside the boss's room in one second flat like I should have. Improvement number three, not letting him attack me at the start of the fight. Improvement number four, using Luca's level one magic to hit the head for good damage. Last but not least, improvement number five, getting things going right away, not letting him attack me while I fumble around trying to explain what he's capable of. Let's do all the things better this time. In fact, you know what? Uh, barrier sphere, shi shield sphere. Might as well use that on my healer because Lord knows that she needs it. And shield sphere on Luca. Magus actually has got pretty great defense and Luca's kind of been the weird one. I like him hitting Magus with a, with a status ailment. That's exactly what I want to see. We have 30 lapises or lapi, whichever you prefer to call it in a plural, and let's just do better this time. We learn from our mistakes, we'll make it better. Uh, Marl is actually confused right there, is she not? Uh, yeah, it looks like it. She's kind of holding up her crossbow like she's performing some kind of ritual with it, like she's praying to some kind of uh, arrow god. <laughs> uh, fire on you. And from there, I think this fight's pretty simple. It's just a matter of beating up on the head as much as you can. Oh no, she's just defending with it. She wasn't actually confused. She didn't have the stars over her head. What am I saying? Uh, Marl's got level one ice. And I also said that Magus would make a fine, fine healer given the circumstances. Thankfully, that doesn't hit the rest of its body like you'd think. And stuff's looking pretty good now. I kind of wish I got a few more shield spheres off of the uh, Ocean Palace back in Zeal Kingdom when I had the chance, now that I'm saying I only had two of them, but I can't complain. Better than not knowing what charm does at all on a first playthrough because all you cared about was stuff that did damage. I've been there, I've done that. I don't regret my dark past. <laughs> Fire! You know, actually, maybe the Antipode Bomb level one would be good right about now. That doesn't hit all enemies, I don't think. I think it's just the Antipode Bomb level two that does. You can hit it. It's not doing a whole lot, actually. Whenever it does attack, it's just trying to hit Magus with a status, which uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but it's not very effective. Oh, didn't even need it. Took it out pretty quickly, actually. Got an elixir for our troubles, and that's a boss down. Right next to it is the Gigaton Arm. I'm sorry, Robo, that I'm not using you for this. The Gigaton Arm has eight more attack than the ruler of Germany. That's powerful. And with the lava spawned down, that means we're nowhere near the top. There's still more to go. Oh, that's what I get for trying to give a more scenic view. I was going to say that we were going to end things off there. Uh, Magus, reduce them to ashes. Very in character with you. Show them real fire. And by M, I mean Luca, because she desperately needs to see how to do that, given her past performance. I was saying, we're going to end things off here. Next time on Chrono Trigger, we scale the rest of Death Peak. See you guys then.